How to quickly fix the sustained pedal issue in Ableton Live. Hi, I'm Toby from AbletonDrama.com and I created a few Max for Live devices all about handling sustain in Ableton Live a little bit different. So what's the most common issue here with the sustain in Ableton Live? We have this whole sustain pedal thing happening here and I'm using the Spitfire Audio Grand Piano and you can even hear a pedal noise in the background which is nice, but if you're using MIDI clips with um, sustain pedal information, you can see that this sustain pedal information is still being kept on if you are not having sent over the MIDI information for the sustain pedal off. So let me show this um, practical. So I have a MIDI clip here and we can see this uh, MIDI control CC64 is the general MIDI standard for the notes here. So if we just have a look on the notes and have a listen, you can hear that the notes are still ringing even if they are off. So that's like a typical thing, um, how a piano would work. So I'm playing the notes and I'm now pressing my sustain pedal, which I usually do by foot obviously. So even if I don't play any notes, the notes are still ringing. And when I release the sustain pedal, the notes are going off. So this is what's happening here inside the MIDI clip. The notes are off actually, but the sustain pedal information here, which is on is 127 and off would be the zero. Um, this information here is printed into the clip. So when I play this clip, really nice. So when I stop Ableton Live here, the last information um, the sustain pedal CC64 was sending is an on information. So if I stop the clip here and if I now play, notes are still ringing. Yeah, there are no notes off even if I release the notes. I have to press my pedal again and send in this pedal off information. So obviously this is um, not good because you might end up by accident um, just having this whole ringing notes um, happening all the time. And for this there is a quick fix actually. You could just delete all this information in here but that's um, then wouldn't sound as nice and as it is played here. So what you can do is you can use my Max for Live device fix sustain stuck and hanging notes. So if I just put this on here the sustain off information will automatically being sent as soon as you stop your Ableton Live set. So if I'm now running this track Let's have a look on the sustain info here. So I stop the clip now and the last information again was 127, the pedal on. Sustain sh would be on, but my device is now sending a sustain off because the you stopped the transport in Ableton Live. So now, yeah notes are not or the sustain pedal is off. It gives you a little monitor here as well. So always when the pedal is pressed, this is lightening up red to show you that this is happening. So this is part of a full pack of um, different devices to handle sustain differently in Ableton Live. Um, there are links in the video description below or head over to ableton.com and have a look for the fixed sustain stuck notes hanging notes device. So if you search for sustain uh, Max for Live on my page, you will find it as well. Okay, cool. So let's have a look on all the other devices I have in here. So for example, I mentioned you could actually delete all this information in here. And um, this is a destructive change. So if I delete this in here, not sounding nice. And if I just want to check and maybe I just need the notes to be sent somewhere else um, quickly and I want to check um, how does this sound without sustain pedal at all? I could use my block sustain device here and if it's on the track and it's doing... Uh, 
um, I need to press reset once. Yeah, and now it works. Okay, so sometimes the information is still in the background, is still in Ableton Live system. And then for if that's the case, you just quickly need to press reset once um, just to make sure that it was turned off. But usually if you drag and drop it onto the device, it's just blocking all the sustained information here. And now you could record this into a second MIDI clip here like um, Let's quickly do this. So for example, we are taking this clip here now, which has the CC uh, sustained pedal information on here. But we are recording this into the next track. We are grabbing the MIDI from the first track here and recording this into a second track. And so now on the second track, we will have this whole um, notes but without the whole CC64 pedal information. So um, obviously that might not be the nicest solution here. So um, I created a another device which is actually taking this sustain information and translating this to extend the note to be so actually the notes to be longer. So let's quickly have a look how this would look like. So if we're using this because it's on there already, let's quickly press reset. And we can even uh, turn on a view here so we can see which notes we got in here. So we get a nice view in here as well. So let's um, record this to our second track here again. And let's have a look what this device is doing. And we can see already that the notes um, we, which are on the first track, they are extended via the MIDI control change and the pedal um, data here. So those notes are off in this area, but the sustain pedal is extending those notes. So now we used this device here, translate sustains, um, sustain to note on and note off. And this is actually blocking the off notes here um, and is sustaining those notes to be full MIDI notes. So as we can see now here, let's have a look on the notes view. So this is how it looks like um, on the original file. And this is how it looks like now on the next file where we have the next MIDI clip, I mean, where we have those notes being extended via the sustain pedal. So now we have those notes actually how they, sh it's a similar, it's, it's the same, exactly the same. And I can um, give you a listen here. Yeah, so it's just a different MIDI information here. If you have shorter notes, but extended by a sustain pedal, or if we just take this information from the sustain pedal and extend the notes, really the MIDI information here. So this could become handy. For example, if you use one device of mine, which is sending synced MIDI notes from a MIDI clip source or from a different source, over to be triggered on a different track. If you are interested in that, I will put a link in the video description. This whole concept is called sync MIDI triggering. And um, it could be used as well, this technique, if we are using um, note information here. So for example, I put this into MuseScore and the whole MIDI clip export and opening um, MIDI clips up or MIDI, um, MIDI files up in a uh, second um, note uh, editing sheet music software is not the nicest um, in general in um, when you're using MIDI files from Ableton Live, but it gives you something to work on. So if you export the MIDI clips here and we actually should get um, some different stuffs here, but just to show you, um, those the original clip would look like this and sound like this um, and we are not getting the sound but you get the, an idea it's like it's short qu quite short notes here 
and this is with a sustain so the whole pedal information is not being translated well um, into the MIDI file itself from Ableton Live. So it actually should s look like something like this here. So because the notes are still ringing and we can see here we get much longer notes. So the first note here, for example, is going into the second bar still ringing. And on our first, it's just being um, one eight note and then another um, binded eight note as well. So just one quarter note here. And it's actually in the original file. Um, <laughs> ringing into the second um, bar here and just all this information is being processed different and um, actually can be uh, made use of by other softwares a little bit better if Ableton is not sending out this um, and not printing this whole sustain thing into the MIDI clip which it currently isn't doing that well. Okay, so we have a few more devices here. So um, because you might not have a piano keyboard to use with a pedal um, information sending this MIDI CC64 on off, 127 and zero, you might just have, just, you might have a uh, different uh, controller here, like an MPD-218, which is sending note information as well, but you can't connect a sustain pedal anywhere here. So how can you use this one now for playing, um, sorry, you need to go to the right track to play um, sustain information here as well. So we can use, and that's like a kind of like a fake sustain because it's using, it's extending the notes actually, and it's not using the CC64 from here. It's using my whole technique, um, oops, uh, my whole technique of extending notes. So notes will still last and the note off is being sent when you turn off the note off. So let's have a look. Um, we get a view here as well. Let's start with, and I need to make sure nothing is MIDI mapped at the moment. Yes, perfect. Okay, so we want to um, turn a sustain on and a sustain off. And we can do this via MIDI mapping MIDI notes. So first of all, I'm playing a few MIDI notes. Okay, and I want to have those being used by a sustain. So I could now use a pedal sending a MIDI note or um, I could use pads on here as well. I do this for showing purposes. So if you have a foot switch, that's great. So you could use this one. Um, let's first try to use sustain on and sustain off via those two buttons up here. So we need to go into the MIDI map menu, which can be accessed um, back here via the MIDI map, activating the MIDI map menu on the top right here. So now we can uh, select or via Command Shift M, Command M, Command Shift M. Um, I need to check that. Command Shift M or Command M. Um, so I'm now in the MIDI map menu and I want to turn the sustain on via this pad here and I want to turn the sustain off via this pad here. So now I leave the MIDI map menu. Let's check this Command M, Command M, not Command Shift M. Command Shift M is for new MIDI clip if I'm right. Okay, so I now play a few notes and I turn the sustain on and I hit the pad excellently, but you can hear the notes are still ringing and I now want to switch the sustain off. There we go. And this way, I could extend notes this way. So if I want to use, and let's get rid of the MIDI mapping, Command M, M, select those notes, and then select those fields, I mean, and then just delete. Um, you might want to use a different technique here. Um, so for example, you need to send always an Ableton Live via MIDI map mode, natively MIDI, Mapping in Ableton Live is only listening to note on signal, so it's not listening to a release signal. So what I could do here now is if I just want to use one pad, one button, one pedal, which is sending a MIDI note, I could use the sustain toggle device here, which lets me do that and lets me uh, listen to a MIDI note going 
into this track directly. So what does this mean? So I first need to sync up, I need to activate this direct MIDI note in on this track. And so now this track uh, and this function here is listening, is waiting for me to send in a MIDI note and it will detect the MIDI note pitch automatically. And the, now I can, you can see this with a red view, you get a view here as well. Same on the first device, um, if it's on, we can see that here. Uh, we got the notes view here as well. So you can see the sustain or the fake sustain, I would call it because um, it's extending notes sustain uh, technique here. So this is now uh, happening via one button as long as it, ho as it is hold down. Notes are getting sustained. If I release this button, the notes are will be will be turned off. Whee! Okay, so one more thing about this whole sustain thing and MIDI mapping. So um, just to show you, if I would use a MIDI note to MIDI map to a toggle button here, I would get the following um, behavior. So um, it's only listening only listening to a note on so i have to press it twice it wouldn't listen to the release here so it's i have to press it once for turning it on and once for turning the fake sustain off so this way um, that could be a technique you want you might want to use but if you're using a pedal which is sending a MIDI CC signal um, let me just show you quickly so let's um, let's say this knob here would be now a sustain pedal. So um, when I'm pr pressing it down, it's sending a uh, CC 127 value. And if it's all the way down, if I release the pedal, it's on s the value zero. So now the pedal on, release the pedal. So this would work um, if you're using a pedal. So if you don't have an e-piano sending in a, uh, being able to connect um, the whole CC67 pedal message here. You could just map um, straight uh, and directly a CC um, pedal going in, map this via the native MIDI map menu to this button here, um, to the sustain button here, and then directly have a fake sustain behavior for extending notes. Again, this could work via MIDI notes as well. And then I would suggest using um, the direct MIDI note input here. So now press it's on and on release, the notes will be turned off. Okay, so all those sustain devices I showed here, are, there are quite a few, but I mean, um, there are quite a lot of possibilities and different use cases on how to use the sustain, fake sustain, how to block sustain, and how to um, how to deal with sustain, making sure it's turned off um, in Ableton Live when the transport is off as well. So all those devices are combined in a pack. Those are Max for Life devices, which means you will need Max for Life for making use of those. Max for Life is included in Ableton Live Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton life as standard. Please have a look in the video description here for the links or just head over to avidrummer.com and look for sustain pack and then you can get those devices and check them out. Cool. Stay tuned. Bye bye.